you got it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome, everyone, to the 25th Sunday in Ordinary. Please turn in your missile to hymn 395 and join me in singing The City of God. For some of you may not have heard this before. Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the 
sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who founded all the commands of the sacred law upon love of you and of neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Word. Give peace, O oh Lord, to those who wait for you. Training. 
given to him. For if the for if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and never and deliver him from hand of his foes. foes. Morning by morning, you were. 
last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst and putting his arms around it, he said to them, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Welcome to the 25th Sunday in Ordinary. Well, let's give two seconds for them to pass. And then we may have to leave the door open for a minute. I apologize. The incense got out of control. Father Joseph bought new incense called Gift of the Magi, and it didn't work. So I returned to the frankincense, and we forgot that it gets really, really smoky. So just remember this. We've got to look forward to it during Advent. I'm kidding, we're going to switch it up. So, and we'll shut the door in just a second. What did everybody have as a takeaway from the gospel today? I can say, first of all, last week, if you remember correctly, the big news was, be prepared for what the news is going to be. I know. And sometimes you just assume what the news is. I know. He said, be like a little child. Why would he say, be like a little child? <gasps> Why would he say that? Because a child is my that's exactly right. And what did they pull up? Yeah, the full of love, Father Joseph. Full of love. That's right, huh? Anybody else? Uh, they haven't um, lost their love when they grew up. They a little louder? They didn't lose all their love when they grew up. Well, you don't necessarily lose your love when you grow up. Let me tell you why Jesus said That's a good answer, though, because a lot of people do. to welcome themselves and to be themselves like children. So he's saying we should welcome others as if they were children, because they're children of God, and that we should be children because we are children of God. What he's really saying, though, in that part of the, the gospel is he's saying you have to have the heart of a child when you see others. And that doesn't mean that kids don't always have bad ideas. Sometimes we do bad things and we're not supposed to, and then we learn, and then we do better the next time. But what do kids do that's, that's almost perfect? Um, play with toys. They play. Mm -hmm. So play, though, is the key. They play with each other. Right? Kids, when they go to school and when they see people in the neighborhood, they don't see a color, they don't see their language, they don't see what they're wearing, they see somebody else I can be friends with. I was telling Dick and Pam earlier, I said, you know, the biggest problem in the first garden with Adam wasn't the exact decisions he made. 
It was his point of view. He decided, even though God presented himself as a community, as the Trinity, that he could go alone. What Christ is saying today is that you need to have the heart of a child because you have to work together. He's saying if you want to be an instrument of peace, if you want this second chance, because that's what he gave us, a second chance, a second garden. He gave us back the tree of life. In the garden, they had two choices. He says, I'm going to give you a do-over. He says, this time when you get into this game, this time in your journey of life, if you want to get it right, he said, there's one secret. Take everything you know and throw it away. He says, and just think with your heart. He says, that's what you need. We learned last week and this week both from St. James that it's not about what you say you believe, it's what you physically show. We learned from the Book of Wisdom today that this was always foreordained, that this was always going to happen, and it was because people decided that what they needed in their own interest might matter more than the greater good. And Jesus says that whole idea of the greater good, excuse me, that whole idea of self is not the way of the gospel. It's not the way that I want you to take it. So Jesus today gives us another simple message. He's not saying be prepared for the news that you're going to get. He's saying if your job is to seek what you hope to find because you're going to find what you seek. I'm always saying ask, seek, and not. Look for what you hope to get. He says today make sure you look in the right place. Today he's saying look to him on the cross, and he's saying, look in your heart. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. We have to open it back up again. Yeah. Can you open it right back up again? I'm going to this down. I apologize. We're not going to do this. There we go. <laughs> this little boy was a sweet little kid, and he was very adventurous, and his grandfather had given him a coin. So he kept that coin everywhere he went. He wouldn't lose it to save his life. Except one day, he lost it. He's looking around his front lawn everywhere, frantic for this coin. His mom comes home and she says, what are you doing, son? What's going on? He says, I lost the coin Grandpa gave me. Can you help me to find it? So she starts jumping in the grass, looking in every direction. They, they look under the bushes. They look under you know, the little mat on the front porch, the little hidey hole rock. They're looking everywhere for this coin. And they can't find it. So eventually she stops and she says, son, where did you lose your coin? And he said, Mom, I lost it under the kitchen sink. So she stops and she says, Son, why, if you lost your coin under the kitchen sink, are we outside looking for your coin? And he said, Mom, it's bright out here and there's no light in the kitchen. <laughs> the point is, if you want to solve the problem, you got to start with where the resolution is. We know the greatest problem we have in this world is that we need peace, that we need love, and that we need faith. And at every step, Jesus has given them all of those keys. That's why he says, ask, seek, and knock. He says, you've got to be looking for it. You've got to prepare yourself for it. And when you get the news, and when you find it, you need to hold on to it. It needs to matter to you. And he says, you need to do it with your heart and not with your mind. Because your mind, it's thinking of what's right in front of it. It's thinking about what it sees. It's not thinking about how it feels. And he says, don't think with passions. Don't think with the things that are on whim. Think as I would think. It's just think as a child would think. When we think about blankets, when we think about Christmas and all those thoughts, they remind us of not just comforts, they remind us of memories, right? They remind us of love. They remind us of who gave it to us 
and why we miss them and why we love them. And that's actually sort of the point today. I got one more little story for you. And this is a true story. You can look it up after you leave. Once upon a time, there were two girls. They were like sisters. They were the best of friends. They grew up together. They were in sports together. One's name was Kay. The other's name was Esther. I mean, a real person named Esther. These two, they had been very competitive in the sport of Taekwondo. Anybody know what Taekwondo is? It's like Kung Fu. It's a martial arts. Totally nothing like Kung Fu. But it's a competitive sport. And did you know that it's a sport that's in the Olympics? True story. Yeah. Well, these girls, they were great. They both represented the United States. They were in two of the four weight classes in the United States. And this was during the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia, way on the other side of the world. They journeyed out there for what's called the pre-trial games to determine who is going to be able to, to live their dream in the Olympics. So they get out there, all four weight classes, and one after another, it's like the Karate Kid movie, right, with all the different battles they have to go through. And they both made it to the top. The Olympic Committee says to the United States, only two of your four weight classes are going to make it to the finals to be able to be in the Olympics. So, we've already got one. This is going to be the last battle. So this time, these two who don't even compete against each other because they're in different weight classes now have to compete against each other. But Kay, this really frail little girl because she's in the lower weight class, has hurt herself in her last competition. Her friend sees her coach carry her off the, the floor. She goes to her coach and she says, I want to concede victory to Kay. He says, you can't do that. She goes out to the match and instead of competing, she bows. They bow to each other. She says, I concede victory. Because she deserves it more than I do. Her friend rushes over to her and she says, you can't do that. You can't give up on your dreams. She says, I'm not giving up on my dreams. I've decided to believe in your dreams, to invest in your dream. So they declare victory for Kay. Kay goes on. And just to clarify, she won the gold medal that year. But that day, that very day that she conceded victory, Esther, she rushes out and she's greeted by a bunch of reporters. Sometimes they're not all so nice. And the reporters, they stop and they said, well, what a foolish thing to do. Why would you give up on your dreams? Why would you give up everything that you believed in? And she says, I'm not sad at all. She said, there's more than one way to be a champion. And she was right. And her friend did win the gold. She believed in the greater good. She believed in her friend. What Jesus is saying to them today when he's leaving his place of safety in the north of Israel, headed to Jerusalem, knowing what waits for him in Jerusalem. As he said, sometimes it's about lifting someone else up. He said, and that is the heart of a child. Amen. Please. Brothers and sisters, please join me professing our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you. Christ our Lord predicted his saving death and his resurrection. Through him, the suffering servant, let us bring our petitions to the Father of all mercies. And so today we pray. For our Pope Francis, who is a servant of the servants of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace and harmony between those nations set against one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
for an end of jealousy and destruction and destructive competition among members of our families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians working for the welfare and protection of children in our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. If you have any petitions, please share them now or remember them with the quiet of your heart. I'd like to pray for the children of our church, especially those who are going to receive special sacraments this year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. I'd like to continue to pray for my brother, who's still in the hospital, and for my mom. Because some mm -hmm. transitional decisions are going to be made that are going to put, to, you know, put her to the test, so we could just complete her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. I want to pray for my bus driver that passed away because she's been for my sister and me when I was in kindergarten up to fifth grade. And she passed away 10 or 11 days ago. What was her name? Miss, um, her name was Cynthia. Her name was Cynthia Jackson, but we all called her Miss Miss Tony. Oh, and she had a, you know, she's only 52. She had a daughter that's a teenager, so. Oh, well, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for the memory of all of our loved ones. We pray for Cynthia, for Tony, we pray for my own dear friend, Tony. We pray for the loss of our loved ones and for their memory that they continue to strengthen us, that they give us back the heart of a child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our loved ones in this community, in our state, and all over our nation who are suffering, Lord. Whether they're suffering from the coronavirus, whether they're suffering from natural causes, from natural disasters like floods and fires, from earthquakes and tornadoes, or whether it is from hatred, from anger, or despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for competition. We pray most especially for fair and love and just competition. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we pray most especially this week for ourselves, that each and every one of us may look always with the eyes of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Father of our Savior, these prayers we bring before you to express our faith in your Son, who humbled himself to die on the cross for us and rose again to our glorious Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice through his hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of the church. And let us pray. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of these, your people, for what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through the heavenly mysteries through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father, most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages, and abiding for all of eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who are on good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creation with blessings. Bring joy to many of them by the glory of your life. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you both day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. We with, it, we with them too confess your name in great exaltation as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you were great and have fashioned all of your works in both wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that entrusting you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to give aid to all, so that those who would seek you might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants. And through the prophets you taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father, most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born to the Virgin Mary, he shared in our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he has destroyed death, and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for he who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father. So that bringing to perfection his work into the world, he might now sanctify creation to its full. Therefore, Lord, may the same Holy Spirit descend upon these gifts, that they become for us the holy body and the holy blood of our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, our Lord took bread into his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O Lord, his almighty Father, he said a blessing over the bread. And then he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given for you. more giving thanks, he said a blessing over the cup. And then he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. to your right hand, 
as we await his coming again into glory, we offer today his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this your sacrifice, which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant into your loving kindness to all who partake of the one body and of the one cup, that all will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. May they truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember all of those who we now offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, for Anthony, our Bishop, the entire order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you today, your entire people, and all who would seek you with a sincere and kind heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all of your dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, we may enter into a heavenly inheritance. There with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all of your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow all that is good upon the world. Please stand. And please repeat after us. Through him, through him with, with him, with him, and, him, and in him. him. O God, Almighty Father, o God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor are yours. All glory and honor are yours. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed company of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace the Lord be with each of you. And also with you. And I'll safely offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> I actually like that idea though. That's an easy way to do it too. Peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away all the sin from the world. Blessed are they who are welcome to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 